Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to another match preview today. Away at Arsenal tomorrow on New Year's Day. Big, big game really, and it's one of them games that we've got to look at. It's probably, as I said before, when you play these big teams, it's a free hit type of thing. It's a bonus game, anything you pick up from these games is a bonus, and... You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how it's really going to go. Reflecting on how this feel before we start off, as as always, it was a good win. You know, one of them one of them results really where you've just got to grind out a result. I think if we had we drawn that game, I do think Ranieri probably would have got a lot of stick. I think we sat up quite negative. I didn't think both teams, you know, both teams looked too scared to win. Particularly in the first half, it was almost like a chess-like type of game really where, where attacks were at a premium, you know... N Neither side were really going for it. And even in the second half, I don't think it you know, Huddersfield really even threw the kitchen sink at us really in the second half either. And it was quite, it was, it was a very, very nervy game. You know, you could, you could understand that the atmosphere, it was a good atmosphere. It wasn't one of them nervous atmospheres. Huddersfield were in good voice beyond the goal, as were we in the Hammersmith end and everywhere around, around the ground. The penalty debacle, it's been discussed and I don't want to talk about it really. But however, in my opinion, look, it's happened. If Ranieri can deal with it. Then, then great. I don't want to talk about it. Enough's been said about it already. I don't want to talk about it. We might as well just leave it as it is and move on from that now. It's happened it's in the past. We've got to focus together now. It's a big, big effort to try and stay in this league. Be a huge next... This is going to be a huge second half of the season now. And we've got to put that little thing behind us. We Mitrovic got... Mitrovic won us the game, luckily. And, you know, it's just happened. We've just got to put it past us. So, looking at Arsenal... Breaking that... Looking at Arsenal a bit more closely... Currently sitting in fifth at the moment, Unai Emery was appointed in the summer after Arsenal Wenger's long tenure ended at the back of the last season. So under Unai Emery, they've played 20 games, they've won 11, drawn 5, lost 4, which gives them a goal difference of plus 12. Top goal scorer is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with 13 goals, and Aaron Ramsey leads the way with 6 assists, which is the most assists throughout Arsenal's side this season. And Arsenal's last three have been a 3-1 home win against Burnley, a 1-1 draw against Brighton, and a 5-1 loss against Liverpool the other day, which which came as a bit of, came as a bit of a surprise to me. Really, I, I didn't think Arsenal would get brushed aside that easily when they went one when they went one nil up. I thought they'd probably look to sit back a little bit, try and frustrate Liverpool. But Liverpool really did bite back quite quickly, and some of the defending from Arsenal in that game was <laughs> it reminded me a lot of how we used to defend at the start of the season, where it was all over the shop, players not knowing what they were doing properly, and players seeing a lack of organisation, which. You wouldn't expect from a Unai Emery side. I ex I'd expect more of an organised unit where each player knows their each player knows what they you know their instructions. Each player knows their role quite well, and it, it did come as a bit of a surprise really because they've not done too badly this season. I don't know if it a little a little bit of a sticky spell. Only one win in their last four Premier League games I think now at the moment. So things ain't going fantastically well, but the, the winter windows are around the corner now. So they'll hope that there should be a chance for Arsenal to to, to strengthen in my opinion. Looking from the outside in, I do think maybe another centre half for them maybe might it might be needed. I think looking at the, um, Socrates and Mustafi, I think it was. I'm not sure who, who particularly played that on, on Saturday, but I know Socrates gave the penalty away in the first half for a couple of little hacks away at uh, at Mo Salah as well. I thought the penalty that class that you conceded was quite harsh. Really, I thought Lovren it was quite soft, but when it's not your day and things go against you, we know quite well that when it's not your day, it's not your day really. And reflecting on that game where we played Arsenal early on in the season, man, you know, we got beat really quite easily 5-1, didn't we? We got brushed aside quite easily. But looking at the way we're playing at the moment, though, there's been a, a much, much more improvement. Two clean sheets now in our last three, only letting one goal in them games as well, which took 85 minutes for to break us down when we were winning 1-0. Uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a lot of different games than, than what it was when we played Arsenal at, at, at home. I think we'll look to uh, sit deep in this game. I wouldn't say we're going to park the bus because we like to create chances as well. I think we'll look, as typical Ranieri, we'll look to sit behind the ball as a team and then break with, with pace and power on the break, try and get balls into the box for Mitrovic as well. I do think coming up against t t the two centre-halves, whoever that may be, in Socrates and Mustafi, if that's them two, I do fancy Mitrovic to have a good game because I do think you can get at them two, particularly with him. And... Look, look, if we can get a point from this or something from this game, it will set us up well for the big clash against Burnley in a couple of weeks' time, which we uh, we need to get a few points from. Obviously, we're on FA Cup duty on Sunday, so that's another matter as well. But looking at the head-to-head -head stats for our, in, between Arsenal and Fulham, Arsenal have won in this fixture 19 times. We've only won in this fixture three times with all three wins coming at home. So the Emirates is not a, ha a happy hunting ground for us. Never has been. We've never won, We've never won there, I don't think, off the top of my head. 
I don't think we've played too badly in some visits we've been there, but we just don't seem to have that luck when we go there. It's, as I said, it's not a happy hunting ground, and we do come up short near enough every single time we play. So looking into some of the stats, as I said, Arsenal have only won one of the last four games, as I mentioned earlier on. But look, they're, they're a quality side, Arsenal. I do believe they'll come through it quite well. If they get their right investment and, and you know Emery gets the backing in the, jam, in, in the winter window, then I can see them at least solidifying a top four place. They're a good side. They've got fantastic firepower on their team. If they can look to shore up defensively, then I think they'll be they'll be quite sound for the rest of the season. But as I said, defensively, it looks to be their Achilles heel at the moment and they really need to do they need to really to shore it up with maybe another centre-half maybe or maybe a couple of other defenders. I'm not too sure. Really. I've, not, I've not watched Arsenal too much this season. I've watched them in bits and pieces. And I saw a little bit of the game on Saturday when I was heading back after our win against Huddersfield. I caught a little bit of the game and I watched the rest of the highlights of match of the day. And they do probably need a bit more defensively organised, defensive organisation in particular. But moving to Claudio Ranieri, look, he's looking for his first league win against Arsenal in 11 attempts, which again, is, you know, the stats are, are stacking up against us here. You know, Ranieri hasn't got a great track record against Arsenal either. Even when he was in charge of Leicester when they won the league, I don't think he beat them. Did he beat them? I don't think he did. I think they got beaten at home by Arsenal. And I, I, think, I, think, that, I think that was the case, really. Fulham, no, we're aiming for our first away win against Arsenal, 28 matches really in all competitions. So as I said, it's not a happy hunting ground. We do struggle for form there. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough, tough trip there. We've just got to give it our best shot and you know see what happens really. I mean, on our day, we can give any team a good match. We've improved in the last few games. I think ever since that Newcastle clean sheet, we've got belief that we can go on to keep more clean sheets. We've done it twice now in the space of uh, just over two weeks, I think it is now. So... There's no reason to, to, to suggest why we can't go to Arsenal and, and, and really frustrate them as well and, and you know be defensively sound. But we, we just got to see what happens. And finally, the, the final stat I'll give: Arsenal won all five of their last. Pre, Arsenal won all five of their home Premier League New Year's Day matches in the Premier League. Their last defeat on this particular day was a, was in 1985 against Arsenal at Highbury. So they're quite strong on New Year's Day, particularly at home. They've got quite a good bit of home form, and their home form is quite strong relatively. We are going to be about Alfie Morrison, I do believe, ahead of this game. I think you know, he came off at half-time, suspect with a knee injury, which is a big, big problem for us. Because I do believe he's been one of our most improved players since coming in from Swansea. Didn't start too great, but ever since Claudio Ranieri's come in, I do believe we've seen a much more better Alfie Morrison. And he's really marshaled that back three we've used alongside Dennis Adoy and Tim Ring, Tim Ring quite well. Obviously, Max Lamarsh can come on in the second half and play quite well. And it shows that we've got some good strength in depth. I do believe he's a good player who can be utilised quite well. But I think we will have to go back into the market for a centre half just to cover Alfie Mawson because I don't think long term the Martian, Tim Ream, Dennis Adoy is a back three that you want to go with for the majority of the season. The, the big talking point of me though, should um, Abubakar Kamara should he get a should he play you know should he even get anyone in his first team at the moment? I do believe he should. And look, I completely understand why people are angry. I wasn't too pleased with him either. You know the penalty debacle wasn't great and. Some of the abuse after the game you got on social media, I do believe the club are looking into to try and identify supporters who've aimed that abuse towards him. The racial, I think it's the, in particular the racial abuse, which I think was, it's not nice, it's disgusting really. The racial abuse in particular is horrible. It's, it, and it highlights really how, how uneducated people are in this situation. Look, you missed a penalty. Fortunately, we won the game. We won the game in the day, and, that, and, and that's all that matters. But the booing, I think, was, was uncalled for. And I don't want to talk about it too much because I've said enough about the matter, but... I'd like to see him maybe get a run in, get a look in, because I think he's got qualities at the moment that we don't have really up top. He's got pace and power, he's direct, he runs at people, and we lack that in our attacking options. Scherler's not quick at all anymore, he's lost about 10 yards of pace in the last four years. Sessignon's only come back from injury recently, and he's looking sharp now. He should hopefully start, but he's definitely a player at Kamara who can impact off the bench. I think he's best coming off the bench, in my opinion. He was also a pivotal player for us in the playoff campaign where he played the second leg at home against Derby and was also an important figure in the final as well. He was one of our major outlets to get the ball to with his pace and his, and his physical presence. And I think, really, if we were to exile him from the first team, I don't think it would solve much at all. I think it would make matters worse. We're in the relegation scrap for a reason. And, look, Ranieri just needs to deal with it properly, needs to deal with it appropriately, whether it's a fine... Which I think would be the most appropriate thing if he wants to discipline him, you know, in the most in the strongest way possible. I think a fine would be the most convenient thing, but it, it, we definitely need him at the moment because he's a player, as I said, who's got the type of attributes that some of our players in our attacking options don't have, and you need these type of players. And I like to see him, if he plays on tomorrow. 
I'd like to see him maybe score a goal and really just prove to the supporters that he didn't mean what he didn't mean anything bad by what he did on, on Saturday. It was one of them things really which which it just happens in the heat at the moment. Mitrovic understood in the end. Obviously Mitrovic like at Newcastle before as well. You all do Matt Ritchie over a penalty once. So everyone makes mistakes, we've just got to brush it aside and focus on this game against Arsenal. It's gonna be a hard, hard game. My score prediction will be a one one. But it will be a difficult game, obviously Arsenal will look to try and, try and get a reaction, obviously, after the, the thumping at Liverpool, so it's not always a convenient time to play against a team who've uh, been well at the previous game because they always want to look for that reaction, particularly at, back at home in front of their home supporters as well. But I'm confident we can nick a point. We're in good form at the moment, three unbeaten. We're improving it with every, every, with every, every game defensively. And we've just got to take our chances when they come to us. As I said, the chances, we're not taking our chances at, at the moment. Obviously, Mitrovic took his goal really well at the end. But when these opportunities come, we've got to take them. We can't, let, we can't pass these up because it's going to be crucial to our season. If we can take a couple of our chances, then who knows? We can maybe get something more than a point. But I think the point would be a good game, would be a good result, sorry. And it'll set us up well for the Burnley game in a couple of weeks really nicely. So if you didn't join that match preview, guys, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new as well. 1.4k subscribers surpassed now after that video on, on Saturday, which is absolutely mad. Over 8,000 views as well. Absolute crazy stuff, really, but I'm happy with how, how things are going there. My, this is my last upload of 2018 as well, which is a... Uh, it's been a good year on the channel, really. We, we started off the year about 300 subscribers. We've ended it now with, one, with over 1.4k subscribers, which is absolutely fantastic. And hopefully in 2019 we can, uh, we can do better things. Obviously this year's been a good season for Fulham. We've been a good year for Fulham, really. Obviously the second half of the year hasn't been great, but we got promoted this year, which has been good. And everyone's support on this channel throughout the whole year has been great. Next year, well, basically tomorrow, isn't it? And we'll be coming back better, bigger and better, hopefully trying to improve the content and just trying to hopefully just, just improve, really. I think it's been a good year, but I'm always looking to improve. And as I said, if you did enjoy this video, guys, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you all probably tomorrow. I'll do a match for you tomorrow as well. Take care, guys. See you soon.